Welcome, I'm Jill Menz, news editor at Focuswire, and we're here with our latest edition of New Reality With, which is a program produced by Focuswire and Focusrite, where we chat with industry leaders about the changing landscape as a result of COVID-19. Uh, this series is brought to you through a partnership with Salesforce. Working with them, you can reopen travel with support from Salesforce's work.com. For today's show, our guest is Lola Akamade Okerstrom, who is the founder of GeoTraveler Media and an award-winning travel writer and photographer based in Stockholm. Lola, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right. So before we kind of get into some questions, Lola, can you give us a bit more background about what you do in the travel industry? So I... I call myself a visual storyteller, right? So I work with different platforms within the travel industry. I started out as a writer and then added photography onto that. And then over the years, I've worked with many different publications and travel brands. And I run my own company, Geo Traveler Media, which is an umbrella for all the different kind of storytelling activities, including my academy, as well as Nordic TV which focuses on influencer marketing and destination marketing. So I do a lot within the travel industry, but the common thread is just visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. Great, great. So that leads me to a little bit of, about content and how that looks now in the, in the age of COVID. You know, how has the idea of content changed and what are travel brands looking for in terms of media content in this, in this time and sort of as they move forward? So I think what I've noticed has been kind of two verticals going through the travel industry right now. The first is kind of Instagram tourism going away, where it's just this kind of, you know, um, flashy, come visit us. This is, you know, this is how we look to more connection based photography and imagery and stories saying we're all in this together and this is how we, we can connect. So, so travel brands are becoming more real, more transparent and, uh, and more vulnerable. And that's actually what's building loyalty again. And then the other vertical I see is just a lot more diverse uh, content focusing on you know, inclusion and diversity mm -hmm. and using the opportunity to kind of jump on you know, the revolution going on right now. So that's kind of what I've been saying in terms of content coming out of the travel space. Mm -hmm. Are you noticing more an increased value on safety? You know, is that part of the vulnerability? Are they, you know, letting you know a destination is safe, what you can do there that's safe? How does that factor in? I think that's part of it, but I think it also, you know, is in collaboration with what the government policies of the destination are as well, right? So I know, for example, Croatia was one of the countries that allowed Americans in over the summer, you know, and so... Each, con each uh, destination kind of DMO or, or marketing organization is going along with what the government policies are. And so if it's still focusing on safety or not coming yet, they are saying, look, we're getting ready for you next year or we're getting ready for you in the future. Uh, for example, like Sweden, which is still a bit open, um, you, you know, the, the flip side is a lot of Swedes can travel abroad, you know, but a lot of people can still come in, you know, and so it, it's really the movement and the safety is dependent as well on the government policies on ground, you know, yeah. and so the content kind of follows that as well. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> great, great. So as a content creator and for other content creators, what are the new pressures and challenges? You know, for a while it was you can't travel at all. And now mm. it's, it's a little bit more murky, as you said, from destination to destination. Yes. So how, how has that changed for you? And what do you sort of see as the next step for content creators? I think for a lot of content crea uh, creators within the travel space is we're, we're afraid of becoming kind of tone deaf, you know, or anything we do during this time coming up as not being sensitive. And there's also a lot of travel shaming going on right now. Mm -hmm. with, some content creators are already able to move around safely, but others are still saying, well, why are you doing this is irresponsible. And it, and it reminds me of, you know, this whole flake scam that happened in Sweden where people were shaming people for flying as opposed to not taking the train. Mm -hmm. So I think the whole content creation industry is trying to find its collective voice to say, when is it? It's kind of like putting your finger in hot water. Is it warm enough? Is it okay you know, to dive in or is it too cold? And we're trying to collecti collectively take the pulse of when can we start traveling again? Because 
if we don't travel, then there's no travel industry, you know, and, and that's the, and I think that's the thing. We want our industry to come back to life in a better, safer, more sustainable way, but we do have to travel. And so that's kind of the challenge that content creators are facing right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for destinations, how, how are the rules changing for them? Because are they trying to attract their local audience now? If they're not getting international visitors or even within you know, Europe, if you've got some borders open, some not, what, how are they sort of shifting how they're targeting an audience and what is that audience now? So I think with a lot of destinations, they are now beginning to learn the travel patterns of their residents, right? Mm -hmm. Because what a local resident wants in terms of travel is different from what an international traveler might want. So a lot of destinations are trying to pivot to create more local experiences that would appeal to residents, you know, that already live in the country. And a lot of travel brands are doing this as well. I know Intrepid Travel has been kind of launching an amazing set of local retreats and experiences as well, so that people that are already in country can still travel around and move around. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things destinations are trying to, you know, react to, as well as create kind of reconnection campaign saying we're still here we still want you guys to come back to us we want to stay top of mind so that once travel starts kind of slowly building up for next year we are top of mind and one of the destinations we're actually working on with a destination right now through nordic tv to kind of help you know frame some of that so a lot of destinations are looking at kind of um, a reboot reconnection kind of campaign to start getting people coming back slowly yeah that, that definitely makes sense we touched on this a little bit about, you know, Sweden doing things a little bit differently. Can you talk about how, how their approach to the pandemic has impacted the travel market and what the outlook sort of looks like for the country based on how they've responded to things? Correct. So with um, Sweden, a lot of the kind of trust has been put in the common common sense of its, <laughs> you know, our <laughs> residents. And I'll refrain a, from comments. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. And in a perfect <laughs> world, everybody has common sense, but yeah. not. But the world is not right. perfect, so that's kind of backfiring in many ways. <laughs> but the pro, but the problem now is it has also red listed Sweden for lots of countries. So, for example, I was supposed to be in Finland on a, on a photography assignment, and because Sweden is red listed from going to its neighbor, <laughs> you know, I, I, I gave that photography assignment for a nice big publication to a fellow photographer already in Finland, mm-hmm. you know. And so those are some of the impacts of these policies on, you know, maybe freelancers or freelance travel writers who can't really um, move around because especially with Sweden where it's red listed, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so how have you personally had to, pivoted a little bit because of the pandemic, you know, not being able to travel. What have you been doing and what's changed? So I've been doing, you know, a, a lot of kind of little changes. Um, when I wear my travel photographer hat, you know, I have to also be cognizant of the fact that my job as a travel photographer is to communicate a sense of place, you know, when you travel. And now that tra- we can't really travel, I can't really do that. And so one of the things I've done is, um, I've created an academy to kind of share a lot of my skills and, and storytelling uh, expertise so that once things start opening back again, people can travel in a way that's, and, and tell deeper stories kind of the way I do, you know, um, the way I love to tell stories, deeper stories. Um, one of the things I'm also doing is I'm part of um, a joint, an antler uh cohort, you know, Antla is a venture capitalist firm. And what we're trying to do is just brainstorm ideas on how to fix problems. And I think with COVID, it showed us that the travel industry does have a lot of holes that need to be fixed on the back end, where if the industry, so that it doesn't collapse this way, you know, mm-hmm. when, we, when we eat the next crisis. So just lots of little things going on. Yeah, how does sustainability, you know, factor into that, that, so that rebuilding component, you know, are you seeing entrepreneurs try and tackle this more? Is that sort of a big priority for people trying to fix things? What, where does sustainability fall in that? I think it's you get, I think that's one of the things that um, is one of the key verticals right now within the entrepreneurial space mm-hmm. is 
for us to be able to sustain the industry, it needs to be maintainable in a way that doesn't um, negatively impact, you know, first of all, the environment, people, lives, local impact. And so there are a lot of ideas that have been coming out of this, you know, trying to create, you know, kind of more sustainable ways of navigating. Maybe um, there, there is a startup I saw recently called Byway, which is um, is allowing you to book all sorts of travel um, outside of using planes. So you can book the travel oh. with plane, you know, trains and just kind of going by the by way or by the ground. So that's innovative. So there are lots of different companies doing cool things, trying to figure out how can we recover in a way that's sustainable um, and actually push us closer to what we needed to be doing in the first place, you know, when it comes to travel. So. Yeah, yeah. So for you joining Antler, what are, what are your, some of your goals and what do you kind of hope to see from, from a new, tra- not new, but a improved travel industry <laughs> in, <laughs> in what you can do with, with that collective? Yeah, well, so I, I am going in, I mean, it's, it was a, you know, out of like 1,500 applicants, they picked 66 of us. And oh. so the goal, is, and we're all from different industries, and the goal is to kind of come up with some ideas. And so I'm just going into the program really open-minded, see what I can learn from other industries, see what we can bring into travel, and see how we can start finding spaces where we can create ideas or companies or solutions. So it's still very early stage. I'm right. going in with an open mind, and hopefully, you know, I, I come up with something within travel. It could be a different industry, but uh, right. travel is my priority. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's good to get all the ideas and perspectives coming in from, from different areas for sure. Yes. Great. So I want to pivot a little bit and talk about a TED Talk you did in 2019, and you, you explored this idea of asking why not. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that and how it relates to travel and you know, particularly how the idea might make the industry more diverse and inclusive and what we can do around that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that concept of why not is um, just being in this industry for so long and coming up against doors that were just closed to me Mm -hmm. with no valid reasons. Instead of me just finding another door, um, I actually stop and say, why not? And then I, you know, I not force, but, implore the person to give me a valid reason why I'm not allowed to be in the room. And so when I, when I gave that TED uh, X talk, I gave three reasons why we could ask why not. The first one is sometimes asking why not could be a bridge of understanding because the person behind that door may not have the key to open it up to me, but I may be the one with the key of understanding for them to be able to open it up to me. The second reason why why not is important is because my narrative is sometimes being created in those rooms without my own voice or input. So I need to break down that door by force, right? And and so that's where the, the inclusion and diversity comes in to play. And that's what has been magnified this year as well in terms of really breaking down that door and then asking why not, why am I, why is my narrative being created in this room without my input? So, so that, uh, and then of course the third one with why not is to ask our, our own selves, why not? Why am I not, you know, why isn't the space for me? And then it pushes me to live my best and pushes me to, to be, to excel so I can own that space as well. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So when you do ask that question, how is the response? Has it, you know, provided the outcome that you're kind of thinking it might come with by asking that? Or what is that experience, I guess, just been like for you? Yeah. So so the why not is a metaphorical why not, right? Right. Yeah. And what it does is it does sometimes expose people's own prejudices to them. Mm-hmm. When you keep asking why not, why not, why not, why not, then they have no more valid reasons to give you. And that's what exposes the prejudice. And that's kind of what has shaking the travel industry as well in terms of the editorial side, where why aren't more, you know, travel writers or photographers of color brought in to, to share, you know, to share their own stories. And so I think with why not, it is a very reflective phrase. It is a very provocative phrase, and it is one that pushes us to do better, to be better. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Do you think that travel brands are, are, How have you seen them sort of have an awakening around, especially in terms of content, needing more diverse content, needing to bring in 
the creators themselves that can speak to certain audiences. How, how have you seen them sort of take this moment and do something about it or, or have they or what, what have you seen? All right. So, so I'm very encouraged by what's going on. I think the industry has re- recognized that we do need a lot more uh, diversity and inclusion. And one of the, my favorite quotes um, I found recently was uh, someone said that diversity is who is in the room, influences who, um, inclusion is who has influence in the room. And so that's kind of where the travel industry needs to change. It's not just about bringing different faces in. It's about who actually has the influence to make change in those rooms. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I am very confident. I am, um, you know, very encouraged by kind of the changes and the, and the moves and the waves kind of moving through the industry because it is supposed to be one of the most open industries, right? Travel right, opens up, us up to the world and makes us more open-minded individuals. So I am very encouraged by the changes. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's important to keep in mind that, you know, travel brands serve a, a diverse set of customers. And so, yes. you know, it only serves their bottom line to try and reach everybody. Exactly. And exactly. A lot of that. Yeah. It's smart business as well. So <laughs> yeah, a lot of it. Yeah. Um, so what else can travel brands do to sort of change their perspective and challenge the status quo? And we talked about it a little bit, but you know, what, what, what more work needs to be done for travel brands to sort of really push this agenda and do something about it? I think travel brands need to realize that being very transparent and vulnerable is what builds loyalty because Mm -hmm. people don't connect to companies, they connect to people and emotion. And so, and I think a lot of the travel brands that are really kind of being transparent and being saying, look, you know, we screwed up, we want to do better or "We're, we're struggling, this is how you can help us. Those brands are what people are going to connect with and think about and form emotional bonds with so that once travel kinds of, uh, begins to recover, you know, then those are the ones you're going to run to. So I think with travel brands, just being honest, open, and human, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think will always serve you. Yeah. Do you have any examples of travel brands that have done a particularly good job of sort of owning what they're doing and where they're at and their, their journey and sharing that? I, I always bring up Intrepid Travel because I think they did an amazing job just kind of in the beginning and they continue to do an amazing job. I think in the beginning, you know, first with, because it is a travel kind of experience company, mm-hmm. they had to cancel a lot of tours, which of course affects the revenue. But then one of the important things for companies is to kind of safeguard cash flow. Mm-hmm. And so being honest upfront and telling people, this is why we are issuing vouchers, this is why you know, we're, we're doing this instead of maybe refunds was very good at the beginning. They were fully transparent. And then pivoting to, to sharing human connection stories. So they dedicated their social media to people sharing stories about maybe travel guides they met or people they met and travelers just kind of exchanging. And, and they had some of the biggest engagement, you know, in, mm-hmm. in, you know, in their... Tenure. And so, and now they've started launching, you know, kind of local experiences and local retreats, you know, in country for those that live in there. So I think that's a, that's a company that's really kind of walking the talk and adapting with change and, and listening to the pulse of the industry and pivoting properly. So that's the one that just comes, you know, top of mind immediately. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for, for travel brands that have so many priorities right now, sometimes maybe you know, showing this vulnerability or trying to establish that loyalty might get shoved down on the priority list if they're just trying to to stay afloat. What might be like a very simple thing a travel brand can do to start to rebuild that connection with their audience and start to, you know, re reconnect those relationships? And again, it's it's all about honesty and saying, look, we we lost a lot of money. This for us to stay afloat, this is what we need to do. And just being really transparent, you know, and again, building loyalty is also going back to the why the company was in the business in the first place. You know, is it about human connection? Is it about really, um, you know, um, solving problems within the industry and then kind of reevaluating their why, you know, and then coming back to that purpose and then communicating it and saying, look, we're struggling right now, but this is why we're still here. This is why we're still hanging on. This is why we know that it's going to get better next year. Mm -hmm. So connecting people back to their why they are doing this in the first place is going to get people kind of loyalty coming back again and people reconnecting. 
Yeah, no, that's a great point because again, through all of the madness, it, it might, it's easy to get lost on the why. Why are we yeah. doing this? Why are we wanting to rebuild? What's, what's the goal here beyond exactly. you know, staying afloat? But, um, exactly. Okay, so we've got a question here. Um, Sweden and other Scandinavian countries were at the heart of the flight shaming movement that began in 2019. Do you think that was just a trend of the Greta year and now travelers have other things that concern them, such as being able to travel regardless of the mode of transport? Mm. So I think with, with Sweden, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a, a more complicated issue because I understand the Swedish mindset and it's one of kind of group mentality where if, so, if the society collectively, collectively says something is bad, then everybody assumes it's bad. And so and, and it, you can see some of that in the COVID response as well, where it's kind of just loyalty around the government um, approach to COVID, mm -hmm. even though people even though there is grumbling and people are not that comfortable. So I can understand why the flick, uh, the flicks come happened. I wasn't a fan of it, but, but I can understand because it has that there is kind of a, a kind of a group uh, <laughs> mindset. You right. Know, it's like this group country. Thing set, yeah. 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 So, so it's a lot more complex than, than that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this isn't quite a question, but I think it's a good point in here. It says, you know, perception is key. We need people to change their perception of black travelers, treat us like all other travel travelers. Yes. So. Yes. No, absolutely. And, and thanks, Kerwin. I mean, that's a great point because, you know, black travelers, many of us want the same thing. It, it doesn't, we don't need to be siloed into just black experiences, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, um, and that's one of the things I also mentioned in the, in the TED talk is, you know, just going outside of those rooms and creating our own rooms on the sides, very important, but it also creates silos of excellence outside of the rooms they need to be in because we need right. to be in the same rooms where our narratives are being formed and dissipated around the world. So absolutely, it's a great point as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, other ways that travel brands need to sort of think about it is it, is also just around things like accessibility. I, you know, I'm seeing a lot more around that as well. Um, how, do, do you, how do you approach, you know, when you're, when you're capturing something in, in photographs or writing about something, do you, do you think about the accessibility component and, you know, how your content relates to all sorts of different travelers? How do you sort of think about it as a creator? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's the thing. It's sometimes you can capture everything, but having your niche and having your focus area and then trying to capture as much within that. So, for example, if I'm writing about culture, then I'm, I'm going to write about the nuances of culture and how it affects different kinds of travelers. You know, if mm -hmm. it's a, if there is it's a culture that sees a group of travelers or for example, I say like LGBT, maybe some cultures are not as friendly. Mm -hmm. You want to make that um you want to share that information because travel is also about safety and you want to make sure that other travelers are also safe in the feel safe in the destinations they go to. So it's very important to think about that in terms of uh, inclusivity as well mm -hmm. and um, places that are not that accessible, you know, for maybe for those travelers that use wheelchairs, all that mm -hmm. information needs to be shared, you know, and there are some cultures that still body shame, you know, and so you want to share as much as you can. To, make, to, to let people know that um, this is what you're going to experience there, you know. And, and that's one of the things I always say about, you know, traveling as a black woman is sometimes when a different traveler travels somewhere, their experience might be very different than me going. You know, they may have the most amazing experience. And when I go there, I'm treated, you know, like crap, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to diversify the storytellers that go to a destination, because then you're creating a more complete picture of the destination. It's not just a destination that caters to a, a single gaze, but it's, oh, this is a destination and this is a more complete, fuller picture. And that's why we have to also diversify the people that get to tell the stories from a destination. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's very hard that, to speak from someone else's perspective. And I think, yes. you know, I think travel brands are really waking up to that at the moment. Yes. And I think that only serves to benefit everybody involved. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. We've got another question here. Uh, what, would, what would you say to travel brands to try to attract more diverse visitors? I think representation is always key. So I need to see myself reflected in what's being sold back to me. 
Mm-hmm. And, and I look at it from my, my daughter and I see how she reacts when she sees somebody that looks like her on TV. So for travel brands, it's very easy. It's as easy as just diversifying the faces you show, enjoying your brands, you know, enjoying your destinations, because people are going to, if they see themselves being reflected back, then they are going to say, oh, that's a space for me. That's a place for me. That's a place where someone that looks like me is accepted and, and invited in. So when they say representation is key and matters, that's what it means. It's not just um, saying, oh, we have these offerings or these services that cater to this market. No, it's actually reflecting and showing yourself back as a mirror, showing that you are one of the types of travelers we want, you know, with our brand, with our, in our destination. Right, right. So looking kind of a bit further ahead, you know, it's, let's say it's August, 2021. What, what does content look like in 2021 in terms of, you know, not just related to COVID, but you know, are we, are travel brands going to be involved more on other platforms or like, you know, let's say TikTok still is around, you know, are they, how are they going to be thinking maybe? I know it's, it's hard to, to yeah. Yeah. But, well, well, I mean, it, it really is that, but I mean, of course, there'll be a lot more video, but I think hopefully the content is a lot more, it's deeper, richer content, right? It's, mm-hmm. I think hopefully we leave a lot of the superficial, glossy behind in this era and start creating really deeper human stories that uh, connect us with the places we go where, where they no longer become just backdrops to photo shoots. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and, and so for me, that's what I would like to see next year is just, um, and, and, I'll, and I'll, one of the kind of initiatives by um, a fantastic travel writer, Lily Gurma, is called See the Caribbean, which she just launched. And it's just one of these amazing programs that is a sustainable, deeper look into the Caribbean, where she's actually highlighting local stories, where you get to really see what it feels like to live, to breed within the travel industry in the Caribbean. Those are the kind of stories that I hope we get to share more of next year, not the uh, kind of Instagram tourism yeah. that, you know, that um, feel, feels like cotton candy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would like some meat next year, or, you know, at least something deeper, soul food, yeah. you know, in terms of content next year. So Yeah, and I, th- I think it comes off, if you see those kinds of photos now, they certainly come off a little tone deaf, <laughs> because yes. you can't, you know, yes. it's kind of like, who's taking that photo right now? Yes. But um, yes. Yeah. do you think this crisis will also impact, you know, over tourism? Are we going to see people not going to Amsterdam, not going to... Madrid or wherever, are they going to be seeking out less populated places because of this, do you think? Well, I I think it's twofold. I think a lot of people will be looking for more kind of health, wellness, relaxation, outdoors, nature kind of experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, The industries that kind of cut people in, so like really big tour buses or or cruise ships, they're going to have to do something and overall kind of the way they're doing it right now. Um, uh, But I, I will see people kind of looking towards more safety and health and I'm focusing more on the outdoors, mm-hmm. but that's just people like independent travelers or people traveling in smaller groups. I can't speak to the, tr- the cruise industry. I think there's a lot of work <laughs> that needs to be done, you know? Yes. So. Yeah. That's a, that's a whole separate discussion. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess kind of on that point then with the independent travelers and that sort of thing, do you see, as we're all working remotely, do you see this sort of continuing long-term people working where they go, traveling to new places once they're able and working from there since we don't have to be tied down anymore? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, I think it's going to usher in this kind of more slow travel um, mentality as well, where, you know what, we can actually work really efficiently remotely. Many companies are actually closing down their headquarters and, and, you know, giving up their, their physical locations because we can work uh, productively this way. So I see a lot of travelers going to start doing that, you know, spending a lot more time on in a different location. Maybe governments are going to start being, you know, in terms of more kind of border, more open border in terms of uh, working remotely and visas and, and stuff. So, so I don't know, there are lots of things and policy changes that need to, to be made, but I think it's a, it's actually a fantastic idea. It's one, it's a way of the future. And I think it would be a way to make travel a bit more sustainable as well in that sense. So that's a great point. Yeah. All right. One more question here. Um, 
Deeper storytelling works for certain types of creative channels, but we know that the main travel brands spend billions on simple text-based pay-per-click marketing. That's a problem if you can't get deep with your audience. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, and the thing is that it, then, then they have to reconsider, reconsider the why, right? Mm-hmm. You know, because um, a lot of companies have just jumped on that to kind of make the quick buck. But then you have to be smart enough to pivot and understand that things are changing, the industry is changing, and hopefully for the better. And then we'll just reassess your why. Is this the way we want to, is this what we want our legacy to be? You know, mm-hmm. and then start if, if it's easy to pivot or at least start making some changes, I think what COVID has given us is time for true self-reflection, just personally as well as business-wise. And it will be crazy if we don't take the opportunity to, to do that right now. Yeah. So. yeah, I think for these travel brands that are spending billions of dollars, you know, how are they going to reallocate that? Are they going yes. to? What, what is the benefit of them continuing to give Google money when they're mad at Google half the time. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, so it, is a, it is a time for a lot of reflection, but also a time to really reconsider the why and see, okay, maybe it's time to just make some simple, small changes in our business strategy to, 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 to make us not feel like we're just fluff, you know, and, right. and feel like we, we are actually working towards a more sustainable travel industry. So. Yeah. We're not just consumers pressing buttons to book yes. now or, you know, yes. we want a little bit more out of it and expect that. I think, yeah. I think traveler expectations are just going to get that much higher as yes. we, you know, start to travel again someday. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And we will get to travel again. And we will get to, yes. Yeah, we, we, just, <laughs> we just need to uh, start traveling better, you know. So. Yes, exactly. All right. Well, we are coming up on time here, but... Um, if folks want to learn more, where can they find you at? Oh, so it's uh, akimade.com, you know, and there I've got links to, you know, my portfolio, my different ventures, my agency, which I run, and my academy as well. So akimade.com. Great, great. All right. Well, thank you again. And also thank you to our partner, Salesforce, for working with us on these one-to-one interviews. Uh, looking ahead to the last four months of 2020 and beyond, you can embark on a new safe era safe era of travel with Salesforce CRM. And you can learn more about this in the replay of this interview on FocusWire. So, thanks. All right, thank you. Thank you.